what's content then? First of all, an introduction to food safety, followed by basic microbiology, food poisoning and foodborne disease, personal hygiene, design and construction, food pests and control, cleaning and disinfection, and food safety legislation. Now, well, although there are eight elements there, I have condensed that down into five units or lectures. Okay, let's start off with lecture one then, an introduction to food safety. The aim of this unit is to increase your awareness of food poisoning. And by the end of this unit, you should be able to give reasons why we need food hygiene, state the symptoms and causes of food poisoning, and name the at-risk groups. First of all, the definition of safe food, food which is free from contaminants and will not cause illness or harm. Now we will look at contaminants, the different types of contaminants later on, but please make a note of the definitions as we go through as these do come up in the exam. And the second definition, food hygiene. These are all the measures necessary to ensure the safety of food. Let's have a look at the major causes of food poisoning. The first one, the major cause of food poisoning is bacteria. Bacteria are responsible for the majority of food poisoning outbreaks. A staggering 80% of all food poisoning outbreaks are caused by bacteria, or what we call bacterial food poisoning. Another cause of food poisoning are moulds. Not so much the moulds themselves, but the products, the mycotoxins that come from the moulds as the moulds grow on food or in drink. And some of these are quite poisonous. Another cause of food poisoning is chemical food poisoning. Now this could be through excess additives in food, preservatives, could be through agricultural residues, herbicides, pesticides, or it could be from cleaning chemicals such as disinfectants or bleach. And the next cause of food poisoning is the storing or cooking in certain metallic containers such as cadmium, copper, zinc, lead. And some other causes of food poisoning include poisonous plants such as deadly nightshade and rhubarb leaves. Rhubarb leaves contain oxalic acid which is deadly poisonous and also some breeds of fish. One in particular called fugu which shows you on the slide there or puffer fish. It's a fish that contains a deadly neurotoxin in its internal organs and if it's not prepared correctly the neurotoxin could leach into the flesh itself and can poison you. It takes Japanese chefs, because it is a Japanese delicacy, at least two years to qualify before they're allowed to prepare fugu fish for the public. And lastly, if we look at some natural poisons that we find in foodstuffs, one in particular wild mushrooms or toadstools, you need to be careful when you pick those as you recognise which types are edible and which are not, or take somebody with you that can recognise them. Another one, green potatoes. The green colouring on a potato is solanine, which is a glycalcaloid poison, and it'll make you quite ill. So if you've got any green potatoes or any green blemishes on potatoes, then throw them away, don't use them. The next one, red kidney beans, which contain a natural toxin. And I'm talking about the dried red kidney beans. The ones you get in tins are already processed and they're quite safe to eat. You can open the tin, just reheat them slowly or eat them cold, perhaps in a salad. But the dry red kidney beans, they must be boiled vigorously for at least 15 minutes before you use them to deactivate the 